Hello everybody, my name is Tommy the Keyblade Master and welcome to my channel. This month I'm doing a Castlevania Top 5 Countdown. Uh, last week was number 4 with Castlevania Rondo of Blood. Now I'm doing number 3 which is the direct sequel, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And it's on the same collection that I was showing off last week. Oh man, not you again. What are you here to complain about this time? The real question, Sonny, is what isn't getting my undead tidies in a bond? First off, you're using the same game as last week. Why? Alright, I guess that's a fair question. I don't own a physical copy of Symphony of the Night anymore. And because of that, I can't just stick up a photo of the box art. I prefer to use all of mine. And I'm going to be looking mainly at the PSP version today of this game. So hence why I'm just sticking up the Dracula X Chronicles collection again, because I'm going to be looking more at the Dracula X Chronicles Symphony of the Night. First of all, Sonny, that's confusing and cheating. Second off, don't you know the whole internet says that the PSP version of Castlevania Symphony of the Night sucks? Do you mean the dub where they actually went and hired voice actors that were well known for dubbing both video games and anime? Do you mean the dub that they rewrote so it would so closely fit the Japanese script to add in the Japanese language track to the game? Are you talking about that dub? That would be the one Sonny. The only reason why I'm not face palming right now is that I can't draw fingers. But why do so many people hate the PSP dub when it's got a far better cast of well-known actors who are more well-known in the voice acting industry and have more games than the previous one, and a dub that's actually closer to the Japanese original. So why is it so hated and why is the original one so beloved? I want to take a look at that in this video. But first, let's go look at what the actual story is about. The game begins with what could possibly be one of the ugliest FMV scenes in history. I know this was 1997, but... Ugh. Anyways, you actually start out at Count Dracula this time, reliving the ending of Rondo of Blood using Richter Belmont. And let me tell you, if Richter controlled this smoothly in the game, I wouldn't have used Maria. It's a shame that we finally get the perfect Richter Belmont in a game where we don't really play as Richter Belmont very much. I'll explain that in a second. As you can see though, he's super maneuverable, he can even dash, he has a whole bunch of really cool techniques that you can use at the very beginning here against Dracula. Anywho, this really is an easy fight against Dracula. You can actually jump over his fireballs for a change, which is different than most other Castlevania games. You've got plenty of hearts. You also get um, a free cross and holy water, which can really do damage to Dracula if you press the triangle to do Richter's item crash. And if you do manage to die, Maria will come running in and save your sorry hide. That said, you want to avoid this from happening because it really lowers your stats if you wind up having to use too many item crashes or have Maria come and save you. Yeah, you heard me right. Stats as an RPG. This Castlevania is actually an RPG. And a somewhat unique one as well, as it bends not only RPG, but also the game formula of Metroid. And it does both really well. After Richter defeats Dracula, you get the most exposition the game has to offer, and it tells you what has happened in the five years since the original Rondo of Blood. Richter went missing four years later. Maria went out searching for him, and just as she was about to give up one year later, um, Castlevania appeared early, and Maria has gone in to investigate if the castle's early appearance is also the reason why Richter disappeared. Meanwhile, the castle's reappearance and the disappearance of Richter has kind of caused a disturbance in the force and a reawakened a very old ally to the Belmonts. The Dampshire Alucard is awake and wondering what is going on in his homeland. He heads into the castle to make sure that his dad stays dead. Needless to say, everything I just told you about the story is told in this little scroll at the beginning of the game. 
and the PSP version is narrated by Kyle Heber. Dracula's castle beckons for you, and no man can say who will emerge victorious. This time on Dragon Ball Z! Sorry, sorry, couldn't help myself. Anyways, from there you'll be taking on the role of Alucard, who has to wander through the castles and regain some of the lost powers he once had, including the usual vampire stuff, being able to transform into a bat, some mist, and even a wolf, to help him get around the castle and figure out why the castle has reappeared early and what has happened to Richard Belmont. The story is told whenever you approach certain hallways with a person in it that will give you dialogue or before and after boss battles. They're pretty simple stuff. The conversations only last a minute at most. So for a Japanese RPG, it's really not exposition heavy. And to be honest, despite some of the RPG trappings, it's more Metroid than Final Fantasy. But... It wouldn't really be a complete retrospective review of Castlevania Symphony of the Night if I didn't throw in a few of the major plot spoilers. Again, these have been talked about countlessly over the internet by magazines, etc., so I'm not going to be revealing anything that hasn't really been revealed a million times before, but if you are new, well, just a heads up. Anyways, after exploring the castle for quite a while, you eventually find out who is actually running the castle and trying to bring back Count Dracula, and it's Richard Beaumont himself. The game gives a pretty convoluted reason on why he's doing that, but let's just say I have a feeling this was the original text. Okay, so the actual dialogue doesn't go that way, but it's close. Anyways, Killing Richter actually gets you one of the two bad endings. Yeah, there's four endings in all. The first two depend on whether or not you kill Richter. The other two depend on the amount of castle you explored. To get the best ending, you gotta explore something like 170% of the castle. Oh yeah, there's two castles. If you save Richter, another castle appears. And to save Richter, you're going to have to explore a whole lot of the regular first castle first to um, require two gems to unlock the door to a uh, place where Maria is hiding where she will give you the item needed to save Richter. Just another interesting note on the difference between the 360 and the PSP version. The 360 version here, she just hands over the glasses for finding the room she's hiding in. The PSP version, on the other hand, but he must be stopped. Yes, but can you? Then for all our sakes, show me that you will! Yeah, they threw in an extra boss fight with Maria here into the story. It's actually kind of cool. Once you save Richter, your goal in the Upside Down Castle is to find five parts of Vlad and go to the same room where you fight Maria to... Um, fight Dracula and get the true ending of the game. The game's narrative is pretty simple and it's kept low key. While there's plenty of RPG level grinding and stat figuring out, it for the most part takes a back seat to the platforming and the exploration. Time to take a look at the two dubs and see which one is the best. Let's start off with the one clip everybody loves to scrutinize. Die, monster. You don't belong in this world. It was not by my hand that I'm once again given flesh. I was called here by humans. The writing in this English dub of the original is cheesy, and the acting is just a little bit on the wooden side. It's kind of entertaining, though. Let's check out the PSP. Dracula, die now and leave this world. You'll never belong here. Oh. But this world invited me. Your own kind called me forth with praise and tribute. Tribute? You're a thief. You steal men's souls, their freedom. Freedom is always sacrificed to faith, good Yeah, hunter. the acting is still kind of wooden, but it is a little bit better, but that cheesy dialogue is gone. To hell with your and heresy. while You're that might be good for mankind. newcomers, us classic gamers just kind of like the cheese ball intro that the original one had. Let's check out another scene between Alucard and Death early on in the game. 
Ah, Alucard. What is your business here? I've come to put an end to this. Still befriending mortals. I'll not ask you to return to our side, but I demand you cease your attack. I will not. You shall regret those words. We will meet again. I have to give props to Robert Belgrade's voice and work here. His Alucard just sounds very ethereal, very much like he's definitely not human and a badass. And it's a very memorable performance. Let's check out Yuri Lowenthal's voice in that scene. <laughs> oh, Alucard. What is your business here? I've come to put an end to this. Ever the insolent boy. But there will be no games here. If you will not behave, be gone. I will do neither. Step aside, old man. <laughs> Such arrogance. Very well. But I shall see you very soon. Wow, step aside, old man. This Alucard's got some attitude. And I actually kind of like it. Although Alucard is supposed to be tacturn, that does not necessarily mean emotionless. And the new dub does give him a chance to emote a little bit, show a little more emotion, and I kind of like that. You get attached to the character more that way. And while Lowenthal's voice is not nearly as memorable as Robert Belgrade's, I like it. It captures his attitude better, and um, it sounds his age. And speaking of a character that does not sound their age... As friendly as ever, I see. It's strange. This castle is different than I remember it. Maria there, going off of the original Rondo of Blood in the instruction booklet, should be between the age of 16 or 17. If that voice there sounds like a 16 and 17 year old girl to you, then my voice must sound like James Earl Jones's. As friendly as ever, I see. It's strange. This castle's different than I remember it. Michelle's rough's take on Maria Renard is a lot better. She sounds her age. She sounds like the character in Rondo of Blood. Not hurting that Michelle Ruff also did the English version of Maria in Rondo of Blood. But anyways, yeah, I like Maria's character better than the new dub than I did in the old one. She is the most improved overall. But it's not just the sound of the voice, it's acting quality as well. Here's one of my favorite scenes from the game. Um, Alucard is trapped in a nightmare about the past. Mother! That voice! Alucard, it's you! I'm coming, Mother! I'll save you! Mr. Alucard, there is a phone call on line three. It's William Shatner. He wants his acting abilities back. Repeat, he wants his acting abilities back. Heck, he isn't even that angry at the creature that actually deceives him during this scene. Here's the um, some dialogue at the end of that battle. Darling, I smell your blood. You're a vampire? Could it be... That strength, that beauty. You're the son of Lord Dracula. Death in the dream world will set your soul wandering for eternity, demon. Wait, I beg of you! Obviously, the succubus was very Swedish before she died. And the way she screams, it's obviously not that much of a penalty. And Alucard kind of says it as a matter of fact. In the um, PSP dub, you can definitely tell that she's scared about what he's about to do to her. Cling, I smell your blood. Your hunger. That strength. That beauty. You really are the son of Lord Dracula. Death in the dream world will set your soul wandering for eternity, demon. Wait! I beg of you! Now that definitely is a bit more horrifying, and you almost feel sorry for the bad guy in that one. That is if she didn't just try to kill him in the guise of his mother, so you can understand why he's justifiably 
pissed in feels that's kind of a suitable punishment at the time. Of course, if you can't tell, not only were the voices changes, but the script was pretty much rewritten. Here's one of my favorite changes to the script overall. It comes towards the end of the game, but just let's listen to the cheesiness of the original. Does it indeed? We'll see what happens after I destroy your weak human side. And to do this, I am about to summon a demon who will grab your arms while I grab your legs, and then we're going to pull! I mean, what does that even mean, his weak human side? How are you going to exactly destroy that again? I mean, what, cut him in half? That line always confused me. And to make matters worse, Dracula appears a moment after that and utters pretty much the exact same line. Let's look at the new dub, which actually makes sense. Your human soul is frail as his was. You'll take his place. I'll tear that soul up. Now this actually makes sense in context of the game. He's basically threatening Alucard to break his spirit in the same way he did Richter to brainwash him, and that makes sense. Dracula's line has changed too, to where he tells Alucard to go away with his humanity. That makes sense also in the context of the game. So as you can see, superior voice acting in my opinion, for the most part, there's a few lines that fall flat in the PSP dub, but for the most part, it's excellent voice acting, and the new script is really great. So why do fans of Symphony of the Night bash the PSP version? It's because the original version is so cheesy, so poorly acted, that it's freaking awesome. And it just feels like Symphony of the Night to a lot of the people who played the game back in 1997, or a little later in my case. It just feels like Castlevania to have this bad script and bad voice acting, even though the PSP is closer to the original intent and feels more like a story that would come from the later Iga Castlevania games. It's the classic one, still just a little bit more fun in my opinion. I recommend actually checking both out if you can. If not, go for the original. The original one's easier to find. It's the one that's available on the PSN and the Xbox 360. As far as I know, this new dub is only available in the Dracula X Chronicles on the PSP and Vita. Well, I just managed to waste a good 12 minutes on something that should have taken me less than two. Time to move on to the graphics. As you can see, Castlevania Symphony of the Night is a 2D game, and it's done pretty good. The animation is pretty good for the era. What 3D effects it has is mainly for the background to give it more depth. There are a few FMV scenes in most versions of the game. They were cut out of the 360 version due to space requirements that were um, imposed at the time by Microsoft. Those have since been removed on newer games, but it did affect Symphony's um, FMV scenes. These are ugly as sin, though. So that wasn't that big a loss, although there is a little bit a loss of story when you play the 360 version. This is also the first game to use Ayami Kojima's art style in the Castlevania series, and she redesigned Alucard a lot from what he looks like in Castlevania 3. Here he kind of looks like a Fabio-esque looking character. In Castlevania 3, he was Dracula's mini-me. I should tell you, this game also has some really great death animation for a lot of its enemies. There's very few enemies that share the same death animation, and usually there's something to behold when you defeat an enemy. Some of them might be a little too interesting to show on YouTube. <laughs> just in case you were wondering what was going behind that black bar there, I just cut a very human looking zombie in half and then turned him into a bloody fountain. Some of the death animation for the enemies in this game are extremely gory, we're talking about decapitation, there's also plenty of scantily clad female bad guys in this game. What confuses me though is Lamenta Innocence had very little decapitations. You did turn a few non-human looking enemies into goo, but that got an M rating. What did Symphony of the Night get? It gets a teen rating. Yeah, think about it. It's the same rating as Super Smash Brothers. Melee, most Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles games, and all the Tales series. 
none of which require decapitation or turning anybody into a bloody fountain. So that does really confuse me a little bit about the ESRB ratings. Personally, I think this deserves an M rating. It definitely has a lot of blood and gore in it. I already went over the dub and the voice acting for the English version of this game. Let's talk about the music in this game, and it's really good. It doesn't have much of the classic Castlevania soundtrack to it, but what it does have is really good and fits the theme of the game well. Listen. <laughs> Music in the opening stage just sounds awesome, and it's really great. Even stages that aren't maybe you know, quite as energetic sound appropriate just in theme. Listen to the chapel music, for example. It captures the eerie silence of a haunted castle chapel perfectly. Like I said, the music is terrific, definitely worth listening to. They did a really great job without using any of the um, Castlevania classic tunes. I like the classic tunes, but I like this as well. Great job, Konami. Now, on to the gameplay. Like I mentioned before in the story, Castlevania Symphony of the Night takes a lot of Metroid and throws in a little RPG and then the Castlevania flare and you get something of the night. At first this does, sounds like it shouldn't work if you played any of the classic Castlevania games, but it works perfectly. The game is a lot easier than the classic Castlevania and that did turn a few people off, but I think Igarashi had the right idea. He understood that times were changing, the idea that a game needed to beat you to the ground in order for you to get your money's worth was passing with the inventions of CDs, so he created this. The controls are a lot better than they were in the classic series, there are no real cheap deaths, and you can grind and find new power-ups so you're rewarded more for exploration. What you get is a really classic game. Much like Samus, Alucard starts out with basically nothing. In fact, he starts off with less than Samus, who at least has a basic blaster. Here, once you run into death there at the very beginning and get all your equipment stolen, all you have is basically your fists. But fortunately, the castle has plenty of weapons for you to find. We're talking about swords, maces, you name it, there's plenty to find. Um, next to these swords, Alucard will have to find items that have vampire powers to get his old self back, including being able to change into mist, wolf, and bat, all the classics. He will also need to find relics that will give him things like the power to double jump or just to see enemy damage. And these relics can be turned on and off, so you can customize the game however you want. Generally, once you find an item, though, I generally just keep it on, with the exception of a few of the familiars. And since this is an RPG, killing enemies will cause you to level up and get more powerful. This actually makes the game way easier if you get stuck in a jam, just camp outside a save room and defeat enemies until you have enough EXP to move on. And if you want, you can also collect money, which can be spent at the librarian's shop to buy potions, elixirs, new weapons, and armor as well. You will need to buy at least one thing from him in the game called the Jewel of Open in order to open certain doors in order to proceed. But other than that, you know, what you do with your money is, you know, your choice. So, it's really cool. The fact there's so many items to get is actually one of the few cons I can say about this game. You are not allowed to sell or trade in items that are not usable, with the exception of gemstones. So, say you find two Hyde Cures armors, which are really weak armor that you find near the beginning of the game. You can't sell it. You're forced to lug that around from now through the rest of eternity as far as this game is concerned, which is kind of unfortunate. It means when enemies drop weapons, they're not you know, a huge source of cash if you can't use said weapon. So it's a bit disappointing in that area, but that's about the only con I can think of other than the ESRB rating which Konami had. This not being able to sell items you don't want or no longer need 
isn't just about money, though. You can pick up so much stuff in the game, it makes going around your inventory a large pain in the butt. This is easily the worst part of the game, just the ridiculous amount of items you can pick up and are forced to keep, most of them healing items. So that's one thing that was done better in other Iga Castlevania games, was the need to tone down and streamline these item processes. And if all the RPG exploration doesn't seem to be your style and you want even more, after you beat the game you can unlock a Richter or Maria mode, which um, lets you play through as those two characters from Rondo of Blood and the playstyle changes a little bit more into um, the Rondo of Blood. The RPG elements are for the most part completely dropped. That said, you still have to explore the castle in a non-linear fashion as it's still Symphony of the Night's map. Still, it's not a bad way to expand gameplay, but I really don't get into these extra modes and these Metroidvania games, mainly because there's no story, I find them boring, and they're just kind of over-the-top tough. With the extra Maria mode, with the extra boss fights, with the extra items thrown into this game, I get a little annoyed when people immediately trash the PSP version just because it has a different dub, especially when that dub allows a Japanese language track to be played. It's meant to be closer and it's better. Now, I can understand the fondness of the original. I personally like the original one, too. But to say that the PSP version isn't worth playing just because they changed a few lines and actually got voice actors who could act, is kind of insulting to me. So like I said, if you have a PSP, it's definitely worth checking out the Dracula X collection. I think it's a little cheaper than getting the original Rondo of Blood on the Wii U and then getting Symphony of the Night somewhere else. If you don't have a PSP, then, you know, by all means get the Wii U and get the um, Symphony of the Night and pretty much anywhere else um, for about 5 to $10. It's coming soon to the PC, so it's not hard to get. So like I said, I kind of get insulted when people just say it sucks because it's different. It sucks precisely because it's different, Sonny. Siri, begin downloading Twilight for me, please. Well, that takes care of that pain in the neck for a few reviews. Hopefully he won't be back. In the meantime, I give Castlevania Symphony of the Night a 4.8. It's a really great game. The only thing that keeps it from being perfect is the absurd amount of items you can get and there's no way to relieve your inventory. You can organize it, but it's manual and it's a pain in the butt. Um, and that keeps it from being my number one. So what's number two? Well, to beat Symphony of the Night, you have to be pretty super. And that's exactly what this game is. Anyways, thank you for watching. Um, if you would like to see more of my videos, please click subscribe.